So I've already touched a few times on the concept of a Darlington transistor, which is just BJTs, multiple of them chained in a row. And we usually only ever do two because more than that is such overkill that it stops working. It uh, has diminishing returns. Normally you have the current through the collector equals the current through the base times beta, roughly speaking to an approximation. And then for a Darlington, it's roughly current through the base times beta beta squared, again roughly. So if beta is 100, now it's 10,000. So you can see the amplification there. But now let's do a more formal display of Darlington and its very close cousin, which may or may not be pronounced Zikli. We'll just go as Zikli and hope it's right. So it's essentially the same thing. It's two transistors, two BJTs, except instead of two NPNs or two PNPs, it's one of each. So let's say you have a regular NPN transistor. It's got a collector base emitter, and we know how to use it. Now let's say we still want that. Let's say we want a Darlington transistor, but we still want NPN collector base emitter. That's easy. We take two NPNs. We join the collectors together. The emitter of the first goes to the base of the second. And then we have base, emitter, collector. And this acts as if, fundamentally, it is collector, base, emitter, as if it was an NPN transistor all on its own with just a multiplied beta. When this transistor is not conducting, there is no base current into this transistor. So this transistor is not conducting. This one's off, this one's off. And this is the one that's controlled by the outside world. When this collector is passing current through, it's passing it through the base. So by controlling the current through this collector, we're controlling the current through this base, which means we're controlling the current through this collector. So the base signal is being amplified through here, and that amplified signal goes into this base, which is then being amplified. So there's where the beta times beta comes from. And there is one more thing. Let's say that this transistor is on, and then the base out here goes goes low, so this transistor turns off. There is a certain amount of capacitance. There's always capacitance floating around that we don't want. When the collector current stops flowing through this base, this transistor does not immediately stop. It kind of tapers off. So it does shut off. It absolutely shuts off. It just shuts off a little slowly. You can solve this if necessary. This is optional, but you can put a pull-down resistor. You just connect base through emitter with a pull-down resistor. Usually emitter is going to be connected to negative, but it'll be connected however you want. So whenever you have two circuit points with one resistor between them, it doesn't do anything. It draws current, but it doesn't change the voltages because whatever voltage is the difference between those two points is the voltage drop across the resistor. So this does not interrupt the control of this whole thing. All it does is cause current to flow through this resistor based on the two voltages, whatever is on the base and whatever is on the emitter of this transistor. So it does increase waste, but what happens is when this turns off, it gives the current a path to flow much more easily than through its own junction. So it improves the turn off time. This is only something you want to do if you have a problem with turn off time. From what I've found, I never do because I'm not dealing with high frequency signals. So just to let you know, all the Darlington and all the Zikli, you can always have a pull up or pull down resistor there. So if this is a PNP, it'll be a pull-up resistor. If this is an NPN, it'll be a pull-down resistor on the second one to improve turn-off time. So that's the NPN version. This is together an NPN transistor. And the last thing to remind you of is remember how you have to have a certain voltage across base to emitter to turn on a transistor? Well, the path here is base to emitter to base to emitter. So you need twice that. So you need more voltage. You need a lot less current, but you need more voltage to turn that on. So that's an issue that Zikli actually addresses. But just to remind you, you do require a higher voltage, even if it is much, much, much less power. So what if you want a PNP? Instead of an NPN equivalent, you want a PNP equivalent, Darlington transistor. So the same behavior as a PNP, but with less power usage. You just use two PNPs. And with wonderful symmetry, you, of course, hook together their collectors, this emitter, 
and this base down to this emitter, and then this base. And then this is the equivalent of a PNP transistor with base, collector, and emitter. So we have the emitter base, emitter base pass. So again, there's that double voltage. So if base is high, then we've got high through here, high through the emitter here, and then we're trying to go emitter base, emitter base, and still high, so the transistors are off. But if base goes low enough, then there is an emitter base, emitter base path with enough voltage that both of them turn on, and then the amount of current going through the base is controlled by the amount of current going through this emitter to this collector. As in, the only path for emitter base current through this is the emitter base path and emitter collector path of this. So you control the current going through this emitter to collector, which controls the current coming out of this base, which controls the current going through this emitter collector, which controls the current going through this collector. And you have a PNP, and you would put your pull up resistor, you could put right here, to again improve the turnoff time, but you don't need it. So that's the easy part. You chain them, and it behaves as if it's just a transistor with a different property. So what is this Zikli stuff, or however you pronounce it? So the two issues, the first is the obvious issue, you have to have more base voltage to turn on the whole thing. It's less power, but it's still more voltage. So that can limit your signal or whatever you're doing. But the other one, which I haven't mentioned yet, is linearity. When you're using this as an amplifier or in an amplifier, of course transistors are not perfect and you can use op amps for better you know, properties, but nothing's perfect. And when you turn up and down the transistor, you don't always get a perfectly linear response because beta is changing. So the amplification is changing and you get a bit of distortion. Better transistors, less distortion. The z -Cli, according to what I have read, has the property of being more linear. It has a better response, so it is better for audio applications. It actually gives you a cleaner amplification, but it limits your headroom, which I'll show you in a moment. So let's say I want an NPN transistor, but I want it to be a z -Cli. We use a PNP and an NPN. Just like before, the emitter there and the collector here are connected, so, I mean, not just like before, but it's the, the bottoms are connected is what I meant. Here's your emitter, the base goes into the collector here, and here's your base out. So, if you look at it, it's basically the Darlington PNP, except this is an NPN instead of a PNP. And this equivalently is your NPN collector emitter base. Let's say your base is low, which means this NPN is not conducting, which means there's no current coming out of this base, so this PNP is also off, so the whole thing is off, just like we want. When this base turns on, when this base goes high enough, and you can see base, base to emitter, emitter, it's only one now instead of two. So when this goes to about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts or whatever, it'll turn on this NPN, which allows emitter base current to flow through collector emitter here. So controlling this current going through this collector emitter controls the current coming out of this base, which controls the current going through emitter collector here. Both of them together control the current going out the emitter. And there's your NPN. Now the headroom, you'll notice there is a path here, the exposed collector. We go emitter base, we go collector emitter, and then we go out emitter, exposed emitter pin. The collector emitter has a negligible drop, we ignore it. Emitter to base is a diode drop. We only have one diode drop here, now we have a diode drop here. So on the regular Darlington, the exposed base to exposed emitter was two drops. So you had to have a higher turn on voltage. In this one you don't, it's only one, but the exposed collector to exposed emitter path, instead of being the nice clean emitter to collector, is got a diode drop. This emitter base coming out collector emitter there. So your headroom is reduced on the outer signal. Collector to emitter has a diode drop on it. So this limits the room you have to have your output signal. So the solution to that is just increase your output voltage or use a smaller signal, use less gain. So it's a trade-off. Lower turn-on voltage, but less headroom voltage. And again, according to what I've read, this results in better linearity. You have the same issue with slow turn-off. So you would have your pull-up resistor, just like before, if you need. And you can have other resistors and other fancy stuff. Every circuit I ever do on here is the basic understanding version. You can add all kinds of nonsense to just make it better behaved. And I try to go over some of it as I understand it. But basically, this is the big one. This is the super big one, especially if you're using digital logic. Generally, if you're using this as an amplifier, you, you might not, like Darlington or Zikli, 
common emitter amplifier kind of thing, you might not ever turn the transistor off. You might have it biased to always be on, but if you're using this in a push-pull output stage where one's on, the other's off, or you're using it for logic where it's on or off, and you're just trying to improve the input impedance, because that's what this does. Less current is effectively more input impedance. That's the point. It draws less current through here and more through there. Then you're going to want this pull-up resistor. But that's basically how it works. And then the equivalent, PNP. So you want a PNP z -Cli. So once again, you have a PNP and an NPN. They're joined at the tops. Again, symmetry. So the emitter and the collector, that's one pin. Then you have your base. This collector goes to this base. Here's your emitter. And this is your PNP transistor that functions as if this is base, emitter, and collector. When base is high, we've got emitter base here, so this PNP is not going to be on, which means it's not going to let any current through into the base of the NPN, which means the NPN's off and the collector doesn't get anything through and it's off. When you get, once again, one drop instead of two, like Darlington, it's one drop. When base goes low enough to have one drop across emitter base, then the PNP starts conducting through emitter to collector, which allows current into the base and you control how much current through the collector here, thus how much current into the base here, thus how much current through the collector emitter here, which gives you your controlled collector output. And once again, we have a path, emitter through emitter collector, so nothing negligible or nothing noticeable yet. So far it's negligible. Emitter through emitter collector, but then we have base to emitter out the collector, so there's our drop. Once again, Darlington has two drops on the base and none on the collector emitter. And Zcly has one drop on base and one drop through collector emitter. And then you would put, if necessary, your pull down here, plus anything else you want. So there you go. You just hook up two transistors and they behave just like a PNP or NPN with different gain. That's all it is. It behaves as if it has a different higher gain. So let's do a little chart. Let's say I have a single NPN, a single PNP, two NPNs, so that's a Darlington, two PNPs, that's also a Darlington, an NPN and a PNP, or a PNP and an NPN, those are your Z-Clies. So first let's have the gain. We'll just use A for gain. In this case, it's beta and beta. And then for both of these, it's roughly beta squared. That's why we're doing this. This causes increased input impedance. Generally in signal processing, you always want to have low output impedance, high input impedance. You want low output impedance so that all of your signal is getting through, and you want high input impedance so that you don't load the previous output stage and change the way it's functioning. And this is why we use things like signal buffers. If we have something that's high output or low input impedance, we can do something like throw a unity gain op amp in there or whatever. But the Darlington and Zcly Darlington end up being high input impedance simply because they draw so little current. And then we just have the behavior. An NPN transistor, of course, behaves as an NPN, and a PNP behaves as a PNP. Two NPN Darlingtons is an NPN Darlington. Two PNP Darlingtons is a PNP Darlington. This is how you use it. And then let's say, let's say base is here. So the base of your Zcly is connected to the NPN. This behaves as an NPN. If the base of your Zcly is connected to its PNP, it behaves as a PNP. PNP. So this is just my attempt to illustrate more clearly that what you result in is just NPN and PNP tree transistors. It's the same thing. The only real difference is the gain. And you can buy chips. You just get a chip that has these on there. You can buy Darlington and Zcly Darlington chips. And if you make an integrated circuit, you just you can make these on the chip, of course. My little, when I was going over the OTA from Texas Instruments, it's got a Darlington NPN on there, which I wasn't able to make work. So I'm thinking that I had a Chinese knockoff or something, but I'll give it another try. But I've done this with discretes, and I'll show you in another video. I'm going to do actual electrical examples with this in with the next video with my breadboard and with discrete transistors it works just fine so just just keep it simple in your brain doing this just gives you the same kind of transistor you had before with a different gain that's all don't overthink it so next time we actually analyze the efficiency i'll give you some numbers and some real electronic characteristics until then i'll be seeing you